Hi, this is Robert at XI Computer. We are looking today at our latest edition of the XI Power Go XT based on the Intel Core i7-3840QM and the NVIDIA Quadro K3000. Here's the unit on, uh, on our right here and uh, the, is a 17.3 inches uh, glass uh, LED eye contrast display. Um, is uh, lighter and slimmer than the previous uh, edition of the XT uh, model and uh, it's um, finished in uh, brush uh, aluminum with a touchpad here and uh, the two buttons, a security access uh, uh, fingerprinting and then uh, there's a microphone and, uh, and a video camera up on top. Um, the, the XT model differs from the regular PowerGo for uh, two reasons. One, the ability to install in addition to their uh, standard uh, a GTX uh, video card from NVIDIA and uh, also the ATI Radeon, uh, the Quadro cards that are um, suited for CAD in particular and must for SOLIDWORKS and PROE and um, any CAD package they use, a hardware assisted OpenGL. Um, this particular unit uh, uh, supports the uh, Quadro K3000, it's a 2 gigabyte DDR5. As, um, has on this side a 2.0 uh, USB interface and we install a little Logitech transmitter on this one and some um, input and output for the audio. On this other side we have uh, three uh, USB 3.0 interface of which one can be converted into an eSATA and there is a, a LJ, uh, LJ45 10 100 1000 uh, Ethernet uh, interface a 3094A Firewire port and a 9-in-1 card reader. The unit also supports an external monitor and in this case <coughs> we are driving at very high resolution as the WQHD resolution of 2560 by 4400 on this uh, latest and greatest ASUS PB278Q. The 278Q is a great monitor um, New standard for high resolution is great for CAD. Um, a mega contrast, it can be uh, tilt, swivel, rotate, incline, uh, it goes up and down, has a sensor for uh, amb ambient light and so forth. Um, we are running here the Catalyst benchmark uh, in this particular uh, build at the, at the present. And uh, this, uh, uh, we can see how uh, this can be also uh, used as a desktop replacement unit. Um, our little virtual um, docking station here with our little transmitter allows us to have an external mouse, an external keyboard, in this case this Logitech Wave, you might have an ergonomic keyboard if you want compared to the standard over there. Uh, you only have to connect the monitor and, uh, and, the, and the power cord and, and that's all you need. Um, as far as performance, that's very interesting. This CPU um, runs at 2.8 on 4 cores and 3.8 on Turbo Boost on one core. And as of the latest um, Catalyst benchmark that uh, uh, we, we excelled on that one, uh, the, the, the goal on that benchmark was to have a, a, a workstation desktop with our monitor priced below $2,000. And uh, we have a combined total index score on Catalyst of 614 and uh, the other guys, Dell, HP, and Lenovo were averaging around the mid to high 400. Now, this particular unit, even being a, um, a notebook, uh, sports 459, so it, it pretty much a little higher, a couple points higher than the HP Z220 CMT, and, uh, you know, in there with the Dell and Lenovo. Price-wise, we are talking about without a monitor and keyboard in, in the range of three grand, um, and uh, this particular unit has a 16 gig at, uh, of DDR3 at 1600 megahertz. Uh, maximum expandability of the unit is 32 gigabyte at 1600. Uh, so ample power and um, enough RAM to, uh, to design big models. As far as the hard drive, as I said before, the uh, SSD uh, primary drive is a small drive. Um, it, the peculiarity of the SSD is very fast and also it has a very uh, high um, tolerance for vibrations, so it is good for, for a notebook in this case. And the disk index, as you as you can see here, is 275, is, is, is pretty decent. Again, beating some also the desktops on their review. Um, 
We also sided uh, this with a 750 gig for capacity. It's an hybrid drive, so it's a typical mechanical rotational 7200 RPM drive with a, a 8 gigabyte of SSD cache. We'll, we'll look in a second how this performance on the drives is, um, is coming out. Uh, while the catalyst ben benchmark is still running, let's take a look at, um, in details at the difference in performance um, about three different uh, typology of uh, hard drives. As a reference drive, we use a 7200 RPM SATA 2, uh, 160 gig. That's a typical uh, notebook drive. Um, we pretty much discourage the use of those uh, drives right now in uh, a performance-oriented CAD notebook. Um, the utility we use is an ATTO disk benchmark. Uh, utility and um, it basically negotiates different size of packet between uh, half a kilobyte to a eight megabyte. Uh, you can see we can see here in uh, at the beginning when the packets are small, there's a little bit of negotiating overhead. But um, at the 7200 RPM SATA 2 drive uh, uh, performs uh, at the rate of 50 megabyte per second on write and almost 60 megabyte per second on read. Um, the Seagate uh, Momentos, uh, that is a XT, is a, is a 750 gigabyte drive SATA 3 <coughs> and uh, is, um, is a 7200 RPM with an 8 gigabyte SSD buffer and a 32 megabyte uh, uh, SDRAM cache. Um, it, it performs quite well uh, and asymptotically it reaches uh, 120 megabyte per second uh, and even more uh, on the right side. Um, that's roughly twice as much performance of the standard drive. The SSD drive is a Corsair um, Force 3. It's 120 gigabyte. We offer 240 and 480 uh, gigabyte as well with the same performance and ramps up really nicely and asymptotically perform uh, at 500 um, megabyte per second on right and 530 megabyte uh, approximately on, uh, on read. So SSD is the way to go right now. Um, shock uh, resistance, vibration resistance, very reliable and uh, reasonably priced at this point. Uh, the price went down quite a bit, so SSD is the way to go. Okay, we are now testing the uh, Spec View Perf uh, version 11.0. That uh, This benchmark is aimed towards the performance in 3D and in particular, the hardware accelerated OpenGL. Um, specific CAD packages like uh, CATIA, ProE, SOLIDWORKS, they do require this um, hardware accelerated uh, OpenGL capacity of the video card. And so the Quadro card, okay, you can play games on the Quadro card, but the Quadro card is designed and you pay a premium just for doing this uh, solid model rotation in real time. Uh, you can play games on a GTX card much much uh, you know more economically but uh, a gtx car will not have an hardware accelerated opengl and will perform poorly on those benchmarks and uh, <clears throat> the the numbers that we have here for this uh, build are, are very very nice uh, uh, compared to the um, published number spec view perf is published by standard performance valuation corporation and we have here a table that was published August 16, uh, 2012. Today is November 14th, 2012. And as you guys can see here, um, the old uh, mobile video card, like the 4000M on the, on the first of the Dell Precision, um, they're more expensive, but they, they came much lower in performance. So this new K3000 Quadro is very, very good. Even, um, you know, on the Quadro 6000 at the desktop, uh, unit and the build that probably cost in the range of six to seven thousand dollars number are a little higher but um this is a desktop very high-end desktop workstation compared to this mobile all other uh, 3000m and 1000m that are here they score lower lower number 4000m score lower numbers so overall we are very satisfied about the performance and the uh, cost versus performance ratio of our PowerGo XT. This concludes the test of uh, um, SpecView Perf. We're gonna look now at, at performance on Cine Benchmark. Okay, the last test for today on this PowerGo XT is a Cine Bench release 11.5 by Maxon Corporation. 
The test is divided in two sections. One uh, that tests the CPU ability to uh, render, so calculation uh, mainly. And uh, the other session is an OpenGL test that combines the power of the video card and the power of uh, the CPU. So let's run the CPU test first. Um, the, the test runs in this particular case on eight, eight um, at the time because this CPU is a four core with hyperthread, so it has a virtual number of total of eight cores. And uh, some contenders for this test are uh, Xeons, Intel Xeons, uh, two CPUs, eight core, 16 thread, uh, and uh, Opteron. Opteron's um, with total of 12 cores and of course 12 threads. The Opteron AMD does not have a hyper thread uh, uh, features of the Intel. Also for, um, for comparison, we have some Core i7, the old uh, 960 CPUs, um, Core i7, four cores, eight thread, exactly the same architecture as this uh, um, mobile notebook that we are testing right now. Test is almost finished. Here we go. Okay, and it's pretty nice. I mean, it's uh, 6.95. is above the Core i7 um, desktops. So, um, you know, of course, if you want to do solely rendering the multiple CPUs and more cores will perform better, but um, for a lot more money and definitely not on the laptop. Okay, here we go now on the um, second part of the test, the OpenGL. This is stress uh, more the ability for a real-time rendering, so it's good for content creation, game creation, um, walkthroughs, um, uh, and all that has to do with um, uh, real-time video. Test is running, and the contenders um, video card on those desktops are some Quadro um, and um, Fire, uh, Fire Pro ATI and also ATI Radeon video cards. Um, here we go, test is almost finished. Wow, surprise, surprise, this unit outperform all those other uh, systems. Uh, total is 60.24 frame per second on this real-time rendering. Uh, reason is mainly um, the, this video card, the K3000, as the new Kepler architecture from NVIDIA, um, very, very high efficiency um, in, the, in, the, in the presentation aspect of the OpenGL. Okay, this uh, concludes uh, our uh, testing for this unit, and uh, we appreciate uh, your interest, and you can visit the excitecomputer.com website for more information. Thank you very much.